Okay, it looks like we're live now. Give it a second. Okay, sergeants, we could begin our backup recordings, please. PC recordings up. Cloud recording started. Backup is rolling. Thank you, gentlemen. Hello and good afternoon to today's stated meeting. At this time, I'd like to ask everyone to please turn off all electronic devices, turn them to vibrate. Madam Majority Leader. Good afternoon and welcome to the stated meeting of May 12th, 2021. I'm Majority Leader Lori Cumbo, and I'd like to thank you for joining us at this virtual meeting of the New York City Council. If you would like to follow along, the agenda for today's meeting is posted on our website. Would you please join us for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Roll call. Adams. Present. Ampri Samuel. Present. Ayala. Present. Barron. Blessed and present. Borelli. Brannon. Brooks Powers. Present. Cabrera. Also blessed and present. Chin. Present. Cornegy. Aki. Dharma Diaz. Aki. Ruben Diaz. Dinowitz. Present. Drum. Present. Eugene. <clears throat> Felice. Present. Gennaro. Here. Gibson. Less than present. Jonai. Present. Gordenchik. Here. Holden. Here. Kalos. Who? Present. Kozlowitz. Present. Lander. I'm here. Levin. Levine. Here. Lewis. Here. Mizell. Menchaca. Presente. Miller. Present. Moya. Present. Perkins. This is correct. This is correct. Council Member Miller, you should go on mute. Powers. Present. Reynoso. Present. Riley. Good afternoon, everyone. Present. Rivera. Rodriguez. Presente. Kalos. Present. Rose. Here. Rosenthal. Here. Salamanca. Present. Traeger. Here. Ulrich. 
Ballone. Here. Van Bramer. Here. I'm sorry, I'm here. Thank you, Council Member. Yeager. Here. Matteo. Here. Combo. Present. Speaker Johnson. I'm here. And Brannon. I'm here. Thank you. Thank you. Madam Majority Leader, we have a quorum. Thank you. We will now have today's invocation, which will be delivered by Rabbi Gerald Skolnick, spiritual leader of Forest Hills Jewish Center, located at 106-06 Queens Boulevard in Forest Hills. Thank you so much for granting me this honor. It's a pleasure to be with all of you. Ribono Shalolam, sovereign of the universe, with humility and gratitude, we invoke the full bounty of your blessings upon the men and women of the New York City Council who bear the awesome responsibility of steering this great metropolis through unprecedented times of challenge. Be with them as they deliberate, guide them as they are called upon to make difficult and sometimes painful choices and help them to know and understand that the physical, social, and emotional well-being of our city's citizens rests in no small measure on the decisions that they make. As we gather together this afternoon, we are intensely aware of how very fragile all that we hold dear truly is. Like virtually every great city in the world, COVID-19 has brought us to our knees and exacted a terrible and painful price. So many of us have lost beloved family members and friends, neighbors and colleagues, and beyond the human losses, we have had to witness the devastation that this pandemic has brought to our great city. Stores and restaurants shuttered, theaters, movie houses, and museums closed, and children of all ages deprived of the invaluable education and socialization that daily school sessions provide. But as the psalmist has taught us, those who sow in tears will harvest in joy. We are on the cusp, on the very edge of a great reawakening of our city as so many of the restrictions on our daily activities are shortly to be lifted. The advent of spring brings with it the promise of seeing our children and grandchildren, embracing our parents and grandparents, having a night out or in with friends, seeing a play, hearing a concert. The painful isolation of these past 15 or so months is hopefully about to yield to a rediscovery of all that makes our lives not only livable, but joyous. As we contemplate the enormous step back from the abyss, let us yet again express our gratitude to those men and women whom we now understand as essential workers, whose courage in the face of this pandemic enabled us to continue living from those who stocked our food stores and made food shopping possible to the men and women of the NYPD and NYFD. They let nothing stop them. And because of that, we were able to survive. Let us acknowledge yet again, the incredible bravery and dedication of nurses, doctors, orderlies, pharmacists, and all those medical personnel who battled COVID-19 in a desperate effort to save our loved ones and ourselves. Let us once again express our gratitude to the men and women who labor tirelessly and at breakneck speed to develop vaccines that would eventually bring us to this day and treatments that are saving lives even as we speak. 
For all this and so much more, dear God, we thank you and ask humbly that you continue to shower your blessings upon us all. And may I conclude simply by asking one other humble request that we all pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And we say, Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Rabbi Skolnick, for that very, very timely and prayerful uh, message of hope that you've given us all today. We thank you so much for being here, for praying over us. But what I gained the most from your prayer was recognizing the mourning that so many of our colleagues are experiencing right now as they continue to do the people's work um, that many of our council members have lost parents, family members, loved ones, spouses. And so we thank you for remembering them in your prayer today. We will now have council member Karen Koslowitz to spread the invocation onto the record. And thank you so much, Rabbi Skolnick for being with us here today. Thank you, Madam Leader, much appreciated. Council member Koslowitz, the floor is yours. Thank you, Majority Leader. Rabbi Gerald Skolnick, spiritual leader of the Forest Hills Jewish Center, was ordained by the Jewish Theological Seminary in 1981 and has served as rabbi of the Forest Hills Jewish Center ever since. In addition to his responsibilities at Forest Hills Jewish Center, Rabbi Skolnick is involved in numerous communal activities. He is a past president of the Rabbinical Assembly a vice president of the Zamir Carl Foundation and a member of the board of directors of the Maserta and Maserti Olami Foundations. He is the past chairman of the UJA Federation's Committee on AIDS and a member of its board of directors Directors. Additionally, he is the immediate past chair of the JWB's Chaplain's Council Plenum and is a member of the board of directors of the JCCA. He also serves on the board of governors of the New York Board of Rabbis. Rabbi Skolnick has published numer numerous articles and he is a frequent blogger for the New York Jewish Week online edition with the Times of Israel. He has lectured extensively throughout the world and has appeared on national radio and television. His collaborations with the Western Wind Vocal Ensemble on the Hanukkah story, the birthday of the world, music and traditions of the high holidays and a taste of eternity. A musical Shabbat have received wide critical acclaim. These productions commissioned by Public Radio International and featured on NPR. Feature scripts written by Rabbi Skolnick and read by Theodore Bakel, Leonard Nimoy, and Tova Feldscher. And the community of Forest Hills is very lucky to have Rabbi Skolnick as one of their spiritual leaders. And with that, I make a motion to spread the invocation in full upon the record Thank you so much, Council Member Kozlowitz, and thank you so much for sharing Rabbi Skolnick with us today. Um, this has been quite an honor and a treasure to have him here today. We will now have the adoption of minutes by Council Member Keith Powers. Thank you, Majority Leader. I make a motion that the minutes of the stated meeting of April 22nd, 2021 be adopted as printed. Thank you so much. We will now go to messages and papers from the mayor. None. Communication from city, county, and borough offices? None. Petitions and communications? None. Land use call-ups? M311 West 16th Street Special Permit. Uh, thank you. At this time, I would like to ask the clerk to take a roll call vote on today's land use call-up. Again, colleagues, we're just voting on the land use call-up. Good afternoon. Adams? Aye. Ampri Samuel. Aye. Ayala. Aye. Barron. I vote aye. Borelli. I vote aye, thank you. 
Brennan. Aye. Brooks Powers. I vote aye. Thank you. Cabrera. Aye. Chin. Aye. Cornegie. Aye. Dharma Diaz. Aye. Ruben Diaz. Aye. Dinowitz. Aye. Drum. Aye. Eugene. Feliz. Aye. Gennaro. Yes. Thank you. Gibson. I vote aye. Jonai. I vote aye. Gordenchik. Aye. Holden. I vote aye. Kalos. Aye. Ku. Aye. Kozlowitz. Aye. Lander. Aye. Levin. Councilmember Levin? He's not here. Okay, we'll come back. Levine. Aye. Lewis. Aye. Maisel. Yes. Menchaca. Aye. Miller. Aye. Moya. Aye. Perkins. Councilmember Perkins. We'll come back. Sure. Oh. Powers. I vote aye. I thought you was coming upstairs. To your Reynoso. Aye. Thank you. Riley. Aye. Rivera. Aye. Rodriguez. Aye. Rose. Aye. Rosenthal. Aye. Salamanca. Aye. Traeger. Aye. Ulrich. Valone. Aye. Van Bramer. Aye. Jaeger. Aye. Uh, Council Member Levin. Council Member Perkins. Yeah, I called you. I, I, no, I called you. Okay, Matteo. Aye. Control of Marty Paul. Combo. I vote aye. Made an effort. Speaker Johnson. I vote aye. Uh, and Mr. Clerk, I believe that Perkins and Levin are here if you want to try them again. Councilmember Levin, Councilmember Perkins, and Councilmember Ulrich, uh, how do you vote on the land use call up? <laughs> Councilmember Ulrich? I vote aye. Councilmember Levin? Councilmember Perkins? Councilmember Levin and Perkins, are you there? Okay, thank you, Mr. Clerk. Sure. Thank you. Today's land use call-ups have a vote of 46 in the affirmative and zero in the negative. Thank you. Today's land use call-up is adopted. We'll now have communication from Speaker Corey Johnson. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Good afternoon. Welcome to our stated meeting today. Happy Wednesday. This month, we are marking Asian American and Pacific Islander Heritage Month. This is a time to celebrate the rich history and the achievements and contributions 
that the Asian American and Pacific Islander community have given our city, our state, and our country. But sadly, we have seen a tremendous and unacceptable increase in violence and harassment against Asian American New Yorkers. And this has been devastating. Together, we must fight against all forms of racism. Our agenda today includes a resolution and a bill designed to address hate crimes. We're also voting to reduce waste and to regulate mopeds. I'm proud the council is uh, I'm proud of this council for fighting to make our city more livable for all New Yorkers. And these bills are proof of just that. I want to take a moment to wish all of our Muslim friends and neighbors a blessed Eid after a month of fasting and prayers, uh, Eid Mubarak. Before I delve into our legislative agenda, first, I would like to provide an update in our battle against COVID-19 in New York City as of yesterday. 32,887 New Yorkers have died from the coronavirus. These are not just numbers. These are New Yorkers that are mothers, fathers, sisters, uncles, brothers, cousins, friends, neighbors, and coworkers. We must never forget any of them. I wanna take a moment to acknowledge some important losses in our city in addition to those we've lost to COVID-19, including those city workers who have died on the job. Sin Lon Lin died working his delivery shift at Astoria restaurant when the driver of a vehicle crashed into his bike on April 29th. He was, 20, he was 37 years old. This is a reminder of the dangerous conditions that delivery workers face every day. And I'm proud that this council soon will be uh, working on additional legislation to protect them. I also wanna acknowledge the passing of a former assembly member and former deputy borough president in the Bronx, Aurelia Green. She was the first woman to lead the committee on banks in the assembly and the first African-American woman appointed as speaker pro tempore. For decades, she, she served the people of the Bronx and the entire city and state tirelessly fighting inequalities and injustices. She was 86 years old. I know she was a real mentor to council member Vanessa Gibson who I know has really been mourning uh, this tremendous loss, and I'm sure she'll speak about her later, but we wanted to let uh, the public know of Aurelia Green's contributions, and we, uh, we thank her for everything she's done for our city and our state. As we do at every stated meeting, I wanna remember the lives of those that we've lost recently due to 9-11 related illnesses. They include retired FDNY Captain John Galvin, he died on April 29th, the age of 77 years old. Retired firefighter, Sean Kenny, he died on May 5th at the age of 67 years old. Let us pause for a moment of silence for Aurelia Green, Sin Lao Lin, John Galvin, Sean Kenny, and everyone that we've lost to COVID-19. Thank you. Today, I also wanna take a moment to say a special thank you, a big thank you to Laura Popa, uh, the council's deputy chief of staff for legislation and policy who is joining the de Blasio administration. Laura's work has had an enormous impact on policy and legislation in the council. She was the architect behind the paid sick law, the young women's initiative and plans to close Rikers Island. She was responsible for so much of the council's work on the environment, on homelessness, on food policy. She has shaped criminal justice reform, including legislation to end punishment for petty crimes, such as littering. And she has been a trusted advisor to every speaker since Peter Vallone and all of us have valued her work and her wisdom. But perhaps her greatest legacy will be all of the young lawyers who she has mentored throughout the years many of whom are still at the council. Laura has made the city a better place for all New Yorkers. She'll be sorely missed by everyone at the council. Uh, I believe she is marking 21 years at the New York City Council. So I really wanna give a huge thank you to Laura Popa for her service to the New York City Council and to New York City. Uh, best of luck in your new position. A big round of applause for Laura Popa. Oh, Laura. 
Thank you, Laura. We're going to miss you. We're happy for you. Congratulations. I'd also like to acknowledge and thank uh, Sarah Gastelum. She has been a principal finance analyst. She has done a tremendous amount of work uh, in the council year after year, uh, especially in covering HPD and NYCHA. And she recently joined the mayor's team. Uh, I really want to thank Sarah for her contributions to the council as well. So congratulations, Sarah. We're going to miss you as well. Now on to our agenda for the day. Out of the Land Use Committee, we'll be voting on the following items. 142-150 South Portland Avenue, an Article 11 uh, HPD application to amend a previously approved tax exemption related to a project that went through ULERP to include community facility space in the tax exemption. And this is in Majority Leader Lori Cumbo's district. 97 West 169th Street, a UDAP application to facilitate the development of a nine story, 100% affordable building with 104 units for low income seniors in Council Member Vanessa Gibson's district. The designation of the Harriet and Thomas Truesdell House, the home of abolitionists who resided there prior to the Civil War in Council Member Steve Levin's district. This will be designated as a historic landmark. Sendero Verde, a UDAP application, an Article 11 tax exemption in Council Member Diana Ayala's district, which will facilitate phase two of a previously approved project, including 707 units of housing of which 347 would be affordable and commercial in retail space as well. There's zoning for coastal flood resiliency, which updates and makes permanent provisions in the zoning text that were adopted on an emergency basis after Hurricane Sandy. It provides communities in the city's floodplains with more flexibility to design or retrofit buildings to withstand coastal storms and floods and to save on long-term flood insurance costs while making the city's many flood prone neighborhoods more resilient over time. We'll be voting on three resilient neighborhood applications in Garrison Beach, Sheepshead Bay, and Old Howard Beach. This is in Council Member Alan Maisel, Eric Ulrich, and the 48th Council District. 86th Fleet Place Text Amendment in Majority Leader Lori Cumbo's district will allow community facility use on the ground floor. 68-19 Woodhaven Boulevard rezoning will facilitate the development of a seven-story building with 92 units, of which 26 will be permanently affordable in Council Member Karen Kozowitz's district. We have two property tax exemptions from finance. Penn South in my district will receive a five-year extension of its partial Article 5 property tax exemption to preserve 2,280 units of affordable cooperative housing. Seagirt Senior Houses and Council Member Brooks Powers' district will receive a partial 40-year Article 11 property tax exemption to preserve 151 units of affordable senior housing. There are also three business improvement district items, Introduction 2267 and Introduction 2268, both sponsored by Council Member Danny Drum by request of the mayor, which will authorize changes in the method of assessment at both the Flatbush Avenue bid in Councilmember Eugene's district and the Queens Plaza Court Street bid in Councilmember Van Bramer's district. Resolution 1616 would set the date, time, and place for a public hearing on introduction 2291, which would authorize the expansion, assessment increase, and change in assessment method at the Flatiron 23rd Street partnership bid, which primarily falls in my district, but there's portions of it in Councilmember Powers' district and Councilmember Rivera's district. Moving on to our legislative agenda. First, we're voting on a bill out of the Technology Committee. We're voting on introduction number 1755A, sponsored by Councilmember Bob Holden, the chair of that committee. Both the 301 website and 301 mobile applications have interactive map functionality or an address lookup option. However, these mapping functionalities do not assist the user well. For example, it's impossible to select a location on the mobile application unless the exact address is known. This bill would require the Department of Information, Technology and Communications do it to conduct an assessment of the interactive map functionality through 301 website and mobile device applications that are used for the intake of 311 service requests and complaints. 
The goal is improving the location accuracy of the three on one intake map. Do it would also be required to submit a report of the results of the assessment to the council. And from the staff, I want to thank Irene Bohofsky. We're also voting on a bill and a resolution to fight hate crimes and bias in our city. Resolution number 1619, sponsored by Councilmember Peter Ku, calls on Congress to pass and the president to sign the COVID-19 Hate Crimes Act, which would enhance hate crime prevention efforts at the federal level. And from the staff, I wanna thank Matthew Thompson. Also from the committee, uh, we're voting on introduction number 2108A, sponsored by Councilmember Fernando Cabrera, which will increase the minimum penalty for the crime of criminal defacement of houses of worship from $500 to $1,000. Acts of vandalism against houses of worship uh, in the city have been on the rise, including four instances involving synagogues in Riverdale just last month. These incidents are unacceptable and go against everything that our city is all about. We are sending a message to anyone who would target houses of worship that we take these offenses seriously. And from the staff, I want to thank Daniel Adis. Up next, we have introduction 2061A from our Transportation Committee, sponsored by the Transportation Committee Chair, Councilmember Idonis Rodriguez. Moped share systems, such as the service operated by Revel, consist of fleets of limited use motorcycles, mopeds, parked on the street and made available to the public for rental. In the last year, the number of these devices on city streets has increased dramatically, a trend that will continue as new companies have recently entered the market. We have to do everything we can to make, these, make sure these companies are doing everything they can to keep riders safe. We all remember the tragic death of CBS reporter Nita Kapoor. This shows us how important it is to get this right. Currently, the Department of Transportation lacks the authority to regulate such systems and no city permit is required for any moped. I wanna thank Elliot Lynn from the Transportation Committee staff for his work on that bill. And we have two bills aimed at making our city healthier and more environment oriented. First, introduction number 1681A, sponsored by Councilmember Jimmy Van Bramer, will require the Chancellor of the Department of Education to work with school sustainability coordinators to develop a plan for reducing food waste. This plan would be submitted to the Department of Sanitation for recommendations, as well as the Council. This bill would require the Department of Education to submit an annual report with information on DOE's actions to implement its food waste prevention plan and the Chancellor's updates to such plan. The bill works in concert with introduction 1673A, which passed the Council last month, which requires all city agencies with food procurement contracts to develop and implement a plan for reducing food. I want to congratulate Councilmember Van Bramer and thank from the staff Nadia Johnson, Malcolm Butehorn, and Andrea Vasquez. Lastly, we have a bill aimed at reducing single-use plastics in our city. Each year, more than 320 million tons of plastic are consumed worldwide, and more plastic has been produced in the last decade than ever before. Plastic in landfills can take centuries to break down, and it finds its way into our oceans and waterways each year at an estimated rate of one full garbage truck per minute. Introduction number 936A from our Committee on Consumer Affairs and Business Licensing and sponsored by Councilmember Helen Rosenthal will restrict the provisions of plastic straws, stirs, and splash sticks, all of which due to their size and nature of use typically go to landfills and are not effectively recycled. The bill will restrict food service establishments such as restaurants, delis, bars, and grocery stores from providing single-use plastic straws, stirs, and splash sticks to customers to accommodate those who might need a plastic straw based on a medical need. Establishments must provide a plastic straw to any customer who requests one free of charge, no questions asked. Uh, Helen worked really hard on this bill. It took a lot of time, a lot of meetings, a lot of nuance with a lot of stakeholders, and I want to congratulate her for her hard work. And from the staff, I want to thank Rachel Cordero, Stephanie Jones, Leah Skirpiak, and Noah Mikesler. That, conclude today, that concludes today's legislative agenda. I now turn it back over to you, Madam Majority Leader. Thank you all very much. Congratulations to all my colleagues passing bills today.
Madam Thank Majority. Thank you so much, yeah. Speaker Johnson. We will move into discussion of general orders. We will recognize council members who wish to speak by using the raise hand function in Zoom. Please wait before you begin your remarks for our Sergeant at Arms to announce he has begun the countdown clock. The Sergeant at Arms will alert you when your time has expired. Mr. Parliamentarian, are there any council members who wish to speak at this time? Yes, Madam Majority Leader. Council Member Rosenthal, Cabrera, and Barron. Okay, we are gonna start with Council Member Rosenthal, but I just wanna remind members, we are just speaking at this time on the legislative agenda that we are about to vote on. Time starts now. Thank you so much. Um, Helen Rosenthal, representative of Manhattan's Upper West Side. The bill we're passing today brings together a tremendously diverse group of stakeholders to accomplish a critical goal, which is restricting the use of plastic straws. As the Mayor's Office for People with Disabilities Commissioner, Victor Khaleesi noted, sustainability is accessibility and they go hand in hand. Three years ago, I was the first, first to join Council Member Espinal in sponsoring this legislation that will dramatically reduce the use of plastic straws and totally ban plastic stirrers and splash guards. In New York City's, uh, uh, it, in all of the following places, New York City restaurants, bars, delis, and other food service establishments. With Council Member Espinal's departure, I, in, I inherited and now am the prime sponsor of this landmark bill. The coalition that fought so hard for this legislation understands that plastic waste is gravely polluting our oceans and waterways, threatening the health of wildlife and humans alike. This plastic trash includes millions upon millions of straws, which are extremely difficult to recycle. I feel strongly that limiting their use is a simple but important step toward addressing our plastic trash crisis. At the same time, it's absolutely fundamental that we protect the civil rights and independence of our disability community. The ability to request a plastic straw is a critical protection for disabled uh, customers who need them to eat and or drink. Our disability community work closely with environmentalists, the restaurant industry, uh, council. May I continue uh, please, for one more minute? Please Thank bring you. your remarks to a close. Thank you. But continue. Um, Thank you uh, for all of them to work together for this legislation to be voted on today to protect the rights of all New Yorkers. I'm proud of the council's work in engaging the stakeholders. Um, blah, blah, blah. Step by step, we are limiting New York City's consumption of plastic, whether it's shopping bags, single use bottles, eating utensils, and now straws. This will be a lasting achievement. Well, I'm proud to be here for the assist, getting it over the finish line. I wanna thank everyone who worked so hard to make this bill a reality, starting with former council member, Rafael Espinal, speaker Corey Johnson, Edward Friedman of the mayor's office for people with disabilities, Junith Ennick of Beyond Plastics, the, Nat the Natural Resources Defense Council, NYPIRG, and Joseph Rappaport of the Brooklyn Center for Independence of the Disabled, and so many others. Thank you, and thank you for the extra time, Majority Leader Kumbo. Thank you so much, Council Member Rosenthal, on this forward-thinking legislation. I'll now bring it over to Council Member Cabrera, followed by Council Member Barron. Time thank starts you. now. Thank you so much, uh, Majority Leader, and thank you for always doing this job with such a grace. As many as you know, recently we have seen a dramatic increase in the number of attacks defacing on New York City houses of worship. These attacks directed against some of us, our most cherished and sacred institutions, institution are a front against all New Yorkers and should be roundly condemned. Bill 2108-A will increase the minimum penalty, as it was stated by the speaker, for damaging houses of worship from $500 to $1,000. This increase will serve as an added protect, 
layer of protection for our houses of worship, and it will demonstrate our, our commitment to supporting our city's religious institution. Let me be clear. Every New Yorker deserves to feel secure in practicing their faith. We heard about the four synagogues that were attacked in the Bronx. So matter of fact, I know uh, some of the rabbis personally. We have seen uh, mosques right here in the Bronx and throughout the city that also uh, have seen the houses of worship defaced. Over 45 Catholic churches, my own church where our pastor well, it was uh, defaced just the other day. We must do better uh, with houses of worship and protecting our houses of worship in light of the fact that houses of worship do so much for our community. I want to give a special thanks to our speaker, Corey Johnson, Chair Adams, Jason Golden, uh, Senior Legislative Counsel Daniel Adis, and my own Legislative Director, Clark Pena. Thank you, Majority Leader. Thank you so much, Councilmember Cabrera. We'll now go to Councilmember Barron. Time starts now. Uh, thank you, Madam Majority Leader. I just want to wish everyone good health and that you continue to follow all the protocols so that we can continue to improve the health of our city. And I just want to remind us of the gravity of uh, the role that this body plays in terms of preserving our city and moving forward. And sometimes we oftentimes uh, have long lasting impact on the decisions that we make. I'm talking about land use number 760, which is going to give landmark status to the Harriet and Thomas Truesdale home. The reason that this home was almost demolished was because in 2004, the downtown Brooklyn urban renewal plan was approved. That plan has resulted in that mass structures that you see downtown Brooklyn, which did not in fact follow what the intent of the plan was and was subverted through devious methods to bring in the high rise housing that's presently there. To talk particularly about the home that we were able to continue to fight for, it was scheduled for demolition there was a study that was commissioned by the um, ECD to be conducted by AKRF. And that report said that it did not warrant being landmarked because there was no substantial proof that it was in any way involved in the abolitionist movement. However, the report was found to be fraudulent, found to contain lies, found to have said that they introduced, uh, interviewed people that they did not interview. And so that sort of really pulled the legs out from the movement forward. There were groups and organizations that fought, the Brooklyn Legal Services, the Fury Organization, Families United for Racial and Economic Equality, and just a general push. If I can complete, conclude? Yes, please complete. Thank you. And it was, we wanna give special commendation to Council Member Charles Barron, Council Member Letitia James, and Council Member Al Van, who insisted that this project be further explored and that our history not be lost because it certainly was owned by folks who were known to be abolitionists and there were downward shafts who could not otherwise be explained and justified. So we're glad that this uh, landmarking status is going to take place and we want to make sure that people realize that the decisions that we make as a city council have far lasting impact. We need to be mindful of that and not have any so-called unintended consequences. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Council Member Barron. Are there any other members, Mr. Parliamentarian, who wish to speak at this time? Yes, Madam Majority Leader. Council Member Van Bramer. Council Member Van Bramer. Thank you very much. No. I'm really proud that uh, this council is going to be voting on intro 1681 today. I want to thank uh, Speaker Johnson and the entire team for their support of this legislation. Every day, the New York City Department of Education provides meals for over 1 million New York City children who attend our public schools. This is equal to hundreds of millions of pounds of food produced and consumed every year. This past year, the Department of Education worked to redirect much of this food to those in the community in need. 
However, there was still a massive amount of food waste that was created. There is an untold amount of food waste that gets discarded from schools without real tracing. Much of this waste is preventable. Through the implementation of a real food waste prevention plan, the Department of Education can divert much of their waste from the landfill to food kitchens, compost, or simply reduce waste. This legislation follows reports of the Department of Education wasting over $800,000 in food warehoused by the DOE in June of 2020. Through these food waste prevention plans, each school will be required to create concrete plans to cut the amount of excess food our schools send to landfill, finding ways to instead donate, compost, and reduce surplus. Again, I wanna thank uh, Speaker Johnson, all the staff, including my legislative director, Jack Bernadovitz, and my chief of staff, Matt Wallace, on this important legislation. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Councilmember Van Bramer. Are there any other members at this time who wish to speak? No, Madam Majority Leader. Thank you. We will now go into the report of special committees. None. Reports of standing committees. Report of the Committee on Consumer Affairs and Business Licensing Intro 936A Single Use Plastic Beverage Straws. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Education Intro 1681A Food Waste Prevention Plans. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Finance, intros 2267, 2268, and Reso 1616 Business Improvement Districts. Coupled on general orders. Preconsidered LU 787 and Reso 1631, and preconsidered LU 788 and Reso 1632 tax exemptions. Coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Land Use, LU 753 and 754, Sidem Street Rezoning. Excuse me. Approved with modifications and referred to the City Planning Commission pursuant to Section 197D of the New York City Charter. LU 759 and Reso 1633, 97 West 169th Street. Coupled on general orders. LU 760 and Reso 1634, landmark designation. Coupled on general orders. LU 761 and Reso 1635 and LU 762 and Reso 1636, UDAP, Manhattan. Coupled on general orders. LU 763, Sidem Street rezoning. Approved with modifications and referred to the City Planning Commission pursuant to Section 197D of the New York City Charter. LU 770 and 771, Governor's Island rezoning. Approved with modifications and referred to the City Planning Commission pursuant to Section 197D of the New York City Charter. LU 772 and Reso 1637 through LU 774 and Reso 1639 zoning amendments. Coupled on general orders. LU's 775 and 776, 431 Concord Avenue rezoning. Approved with modifications and referred to the City Planning Commission pursuant to Section 197D of the New York City Charter. Preconsidered LU 789 and Reso 1640 tax exemption. Coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Public Safety, Intro 2108A, Penalties for Damaging Houses of Worship. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Rules, Privileges and Elections, Preconsidered Reso 1630, Council Committee Changes. Coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Technology, Intro 1755A, 311 Service Map. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Transportation, Intro 2061A, Moped Share Systems. Amended and coupled on general orders. On the general orders calendar, LU 766 and Reso 1624 through LU 769 and Reso 1627, Resilient Neighborhoods. Coupled on general orders. On the, on also on the general orders calendar, LU 765 and Reso 1641, Zoning for Coastal Flood Resiliency. Coupled on general orders, and at this time, I'm asking the clerks to take a roll call vote on all of the items that are coupled on today's general orders calendar. Adams. Aye. Ampri Samuel. Abo, aye. Ayala. Aye. Barron. I vote aye on all with the exception of 773-774. Thank you. Thank you. Borelli. I and all except intro 936A, thank you. 
Thank you. Brennan. I vote aye on all. Thank you. Brooks Powers. I vote aye on all. Cabrera. Congratulations to all the sponsors of the bill and I on all. Thank you. Chin. I also want to congratulate all my colleagues on passing important legislation today and I will aye on all. Thank you. Carnegie. Congratulations to my colleagues, aye on all. Dharma Diaz. I vote aye on all. Ruben Diaz. Just explain my vote. Permission granted. I starts now. Thank you. As a minister and as a pastor of the Christian Community Neighborhood Church in Bronx County, and as the president of the New York Hispanic Clergy Organization, I take this opportunity to congratulate Macali Fernando Carrera for such a wonderful bill. Uh, introduction 2108 to protect houses of worship. Fernando Cabrera, congratulations. You have demonstrated that you really are a leader that cares for everyone regardless. And I am proud today to vote yes on, on, on every uh, item, but, but, uh, but you, the one that 2108, I'm telling you, I touched my heart as a minister, and I congratulate you again. And Parante, Fernando, I vote yes and all. Thank you. Dinowitz. I vote yes and all. Drum. I'd like to congratulate and thank uh, Laura Popa for all that she's done for the city council and for her friendship and to say that she has had a significant impact on the lives of all New Yorkers through her legislation and her work on legislation. Uh, thank you, Laura. Good luck. And, I'll miss you. And, and with that, I vote aye. Thank you. Eugene. Uh, may I have permission to vote in all the land use call-ups and also all the item schedule in the, today's agenda? Yeah. Yes, you may. Thank you so very much. Uh, I, I just want also to congratulate all my colleagues who are passing uh, legislation today. With this, I would eye and all. Thank you. Feliz. Uh, thank you all for your leadership on these issues. I vote yes on all the bills. Thank you. Gennaro. Yes. Gibson. Permission to explain. Permission granted. Time starts now. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Good afternoon, everyone, speaker, all my colleagues. I first want to congratulate everyone for introducing important bills that are being passed in today's agenda. I want to thank my colleagues for supporting Land Use 759, Resol 1633, which relates to the construction of 104 units of affordable housing for seniors in the High Bridge community of the Bronx. Um, I'm thankful for our partnership with Wishfish, Westside Federation for Senior and Supportive Housing, and really providing critical investments for seniors and permanent uh, housing that we desperately need in the borough of the Bronx. I wanna join with everyone in congratulating Laura Popa. Uh, it's been an honor working with you over the eight years I've been in the council. And truly, I wanna thank you for your work on the Criminal Justice Reform Act. Uh, your hard work, your leadership, your commitment is unmatched and I wish you well on your new journey and your new endeavor. We will miss you and I thank you so much for your work, Laura. And lastly, um, I wanna thank Speaker Johnson and all of my colleagues who have reached out and expressing their condolences and prayers of comfort, healing, and strength on the passing of my political mentor, my political mother, Aurelia Green. She meant so much to so many. She lived to be 86 years young, and I am so grateful to God that he allowed me to work with her, starting as her intern in college. She walked with me, she held my hand, and she is someone who believed in me, and I'm so grateful for my political career. She is my mother, my mentor, and I'm so grateful that God allowed many of us to see the fruits of her labor. And, you know, we are going to celebrate her life next week. Uh, and if anyone wants information, the website is www.e218events.com. 
backslash Aurelia Green. And I wanna thank the mayor and the Bronx Borough President for acknowledging her passing by flying all of our flags at half mass at City Hall and at Bronx Borough Hall, just to acknowledge the life, the legacy, and the labor of love of the honorable Aurelia right. Green. She is a queen in every sense, and she has earned her crown and she has earned her wings. To God be all the glory. I vote aye on today's agenda. Thank you, colleagues. Thank you, Councilmember Gibson, and my condolences to you, as I know this is a huge loss for you um, and for everybody in the Bronx and beyond. Thank you. Joe Nye. Permission to explain my vote, Majority Leader? Permission granted. Time okay. starts now. I want to echo the sentiments of my colleague, um, uh, Councilwoman Gibson, on the passing of Royal Green. My prayers are with her family and all her loved ones and friends and all the people that she's impacted in her life. May she rest in peace. She certainly is leaving this world better than she found it. She made it a much better world to live in. She'll be surely missed. And with that, I vote aye on all except for intro 936A and an Eid Mubarak to all of my Muslim brothers and sisters. Thank you. Grodenchik. Permission to briefly explain my vote. Permission granted. Time starts now. First, let me um, give my condolences to Council Member Gibson. Um, having lost my two mentors last summer, three days apart, I, I am certainly feeling your pain this week. I had the honor of serving uh, with Aurelia in the assembly uh, a long time ago. She was always with a smile on her face. And I know that um, my former boss and mentor, Nettie Mayerson, God rest her soul, um, loved her very much and they were very close. I also want to uh, wish a happy Eid, uh, especially to our colleague and my Jamaica Avenue caucus uh, colleague, uh, our dear friend, Danique Miller. Um, and I, with that, I vote aye on all. Thank you. Holden. Aye on all. Kalos. Thank you. Apologies, Council Member Kalos. Aye on all. Thank you. Ku. Good afternoon. I want to send my congratulations to Laura Popa on her new role. This is a big loss for the council and I will miss our checks in the elevator. Thank you for always being so helpful and for your support over the years. I look forward to working with you in your new capacity. And with that, I will eye on all. Thank you. Thank you so much. Kozlowitz. Used to explain my vote. Permission First of all, I want to congratulate my colleagues on the legislation we are passing today. I also want to express my sympathy to Aurelia Green. I had the pleasure of being deputy borough president with her, and we had many, many lunches together. She was a fine, fine lady, and my condolences to you. Vanessa, I know how close you were with Aurelia. And to Laura Popa, it's been a great 21 years and I look forward to the next 21 years. Thank you for everything that you have done for the council and for all of us. Love you and we'll miss you. I vote aye on all. Thank you. Lander. I vote aye on all. Levin. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. I'm starting. Thank you. Now. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Uh, first, I want to wish an Eid Mubarak to my, um, my Muslim friends, um, and I wish them um, uh, uh, many good wishes. Um, I want to thank uh, Laura Popa for all that she has done for the council, all that she has done for me personally uh, and for um, my constituents. Um, Laura has put in uh, many, many tireless hours um, and hard work on behalf of this council and, and we owe her a great debt of gratitude. And so Laura, thank you so very much um, for everything that you've done 
Um, uh, I want to um, offer my condolences to uh, my friend Vanessa Gibson on the passing of former assembly member Aurelia Green. Um, when I was a staff member uh, working in the assembly, I remember um, uh, assembly member Green presiding over assembly sessions um, and she uh, always gave um, those proceedings the, uh, the grandeur and, um, and dignity um, and um, seriousness of purpose um, that they deserve. And uh, that, uh, that small interaction left an indelible mark on me and I can only imagine um, uh, how meaningful uh, her influence has been on, on you, Vanessa. So my condolences to you and, um, and I vote aye on all. Thank you. Thank you. Levine. Thank you. First, with gratitude and best wishes to Laura Polpa. Thank you for all you've done for the body. Wishing you good luck on the road ahead and deep condolences to my dear friend, Council Member Gibson, and to all of the Bronx on the loss of Assembly Member Green. Uh, my heart is out to you, and I will be voting aye on all. Thank you. Lewis. Good afternoon. Congratulations to all bill sponsors. Congratulations, Laura. I vote aye on all. Thank you. Maisel. Yes. Menchaca. Uh, I want to wish all my mother, my brothers and sisters uh, in the Muslim community, uh, Aid Mubarak. I also want to say thank you for all your service, Laura Popa, uh, in the city council, and good luck on your next venture. Condolences to my council member, sister, hermana, colega, up in the Bronx, Vanessa Gibson. Uh, I vote aye on all. Thank you. Thank you. Miller. Uh, Eid Mubarak. And I wanted to say that to all those who, who uh, engaged in the, uh, the uh, fast of the holy month of Ramadan for the past 30 days, that all your fast, your prayers, your acts of kindness, and your charity be received and pleasing to God. And I especially want to thank the, the, the many uh, groups throughout the city Muslim and non-Muslim alike that provided thousands of meals to families uh, during the, the month of Ramadan. Uh, certainly, I want to add my condolences uh, to the legendary assembly member, Aurelia Green, that has been a mentor, leader, teacher, and guide to so many folks, touched so many lives. Uh, with that, uh, I vote aye on all. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Moya. I vote aye on all. Perkins. Okay, we'll come back. Powers. Vote aye and all. Thank you. Thank you. Reynoso. A permission to explain my vote. Permission granted. Time starts. Thank you. Thank you, Majority Leader. Um, I just want to uh, congratulate uh, Laura Popo, who will miss dearly uh, for the great work that she did. Thank you for sitting through my policy dumps um, and, and bringing some clarity to many of the, the, the work, a lot of the work that I did on legislation. Um, your friendship was, was, um, well, was great. Uh, and I hope that you uh, continue to do great things. And, and now hopefully we'll catch up for some coffee somewhere in Brooklyn enjoy some time outside of work. But Laura, Popa, I just want to say thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, and I'd like to vote aye on all. Thank you. Riley. Permission to explain my vote. Permission granted. Hi. I just wanted to take this time to express my sympathy and share the same sentiments as Council Member Gibson. Uh, we lost a true pioneer uh, in the Bronx this past week, and uh, we're hurting desperately in the Bronx. So, Vanessa, uh, I know Aurelia was your mentor, just as Carl was my mentor. So, I know you're um, going through this um, more hard than a lot of people in the Bronx. So, uh, thank you for your services. I know she's smiling down on you. Um, and Aurelia, you will be missed, and I will be voting aye on all. Um, congratulations, colleagues. Thank you. 
Thank you. Rivera. Congrats to Council Member Dinowitz on his committee chairmanship. Many thanks to Laura Popa for her years of service. And of course, to my friend, Vanessa Gibson, many, many condolences. You know you're making her very, very proud. I vote aye on all. Thank you. Rodriguez. Rose. Permission to explain my vote, please. Permission granted. I, I, I want, thank you. I, I want to uh, wish Eid Mubarak to all of my uh, Muslim brothers and sisters. And um, I especially want to extend condolences and prayers to my sister, Vanessa Gibson. Um, I, I, I know how hard it is to lose a mentor. And to the family of Aurelia Green, she was actually legendary and um, might not know it, but she served as a mentor to many of us. Uh, and I want to just thank you, uh, thank and second Council Member Drum's remarks about Laura Popa. Um, Laura, it's been a long 12 years, um, but you leave such uh, 12 years with me. You've been here 21. Um, but she leaves a very strong legacy, uh, legislative legacy and your contributions to, um, uh, to the council and the life-changing legislation that you helped us pass has been immeasurable. I wanna wish you congratulations and the, and the best of all, um, my friend. Uh, and I hope to see you soon um, and good luck in your new endeavors. And I vote aye on all. Thank you. Rosenthal. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Thank uh, you. Starts so now. Majority leader. Um, well, of course, condolences to my sister, Council Member Gibson. Uh, you are a star. And, um, and a lot of people made you way, that way but it sounds like you had an amazing mentor and, um, you know, yeah. Um, so condolences to council member Gibson, Eid Mubarak to my Muslim friends. Um, Laura, I want to uh, say to you, uh, I agree with everything Drum, Rose, Reynoso uh, just said about you, all of that is true. Um, and, and they stole all my good lines. So, uh, so here's what I'm left with. Um, I really appreciate the fact that you listened to my cockamamie ideas. Um, you kept me from pursuing legislation that was truly cockamamie. And you um, also helped me pursue legislation that made a real difference in the lives of all New Yorkers. So thank you for that. Um, the city's administration is really lucky to get you. And I hope our paths continue to cross. I think I already voted aye, yes? You can vote aye again. I, and I vote aye on all. Thank you very much. Just to be thorough. Salamanca. I on all. Traeger. Uh, permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Time starts now. Thank you. I want to begin by uh, also uh, sending and expressing my condolences to Councilmember Gibson, uh, to the entire Bronx delegation, to all those who have been um, impacted uh, by the loss of the honorable and I repeat, the Honorable Aurelia Green. And a testament to leadership is setting in motion and preparing the next generation of leadership. Um, and Councilmember Gibson and many others are a testament to the impact and legacy of the work of the Honorable Aurelia Green. So may her memory always be a blessing. Um, I also wanna uh, say Eid Mubarak to all of our uh, Muslim friends and neighbors. Um, and uh, I also want to say with Laura, to Laura Popa, uh, Laura Popa uh, is someone who always made possible 
what the administration often told us was impossible. Um, and she always took time to listen, uh, to exchange uh, wonderful ideas, and many times effectively push back uh, to, to, against the administration to make things happen. And I value those who make things happen. And Laura, thank you for your service to this council, to the institution. Um, I wish you continued success. Uh, congrats to all my colleagues passing their bills today. And with that, I vote aye. Thank you. Ulrich. I vote aye on all. Thank you. Valone. I vote aye on all. Van Bramer. Aye on all. Jaeger. Aye on all with the exception of intro 936. Thank you. One moment. Councilmember Perkins. Councilmember Rodriguez. Matteo. Uh, no one 936A, I and the rest. Combo. I vote aye, and I also want to join my colleagues um, in wishing Laura Polpa the very best in her new role. Um, as a new council member, when I first got elected, as soon as I came into the council, it was as if Laura Popa was a legend of sorts and someone that um, we all needed to know very well and had to figure out how to create a relationship with in order to get legislation passed. And so I remember being very intimidated upon first meeting her, um, but then over the years, just forming a really beautiful friendship um, and someone who was very helpful to me and getting legislation passed. So I wish you, I thank you first for all that you did for me while you were here in the city council to also get my legislative ideas um, off the ground. I wish you the best on the other side. And I hope there you will also find ways to be able to be helpful to me. And I hope that whatever you do in the future, you'll always find ways to be helpful to me. So thank you, good luck to you. We celebrate you. You are awesome. You are a dynamic woman. And we thank you so much for your leadership. Um, and thank you for your voice and your advocacy, but mostly your brilliance and your intelligence, um, which has helped many of us shape our legislative ideas. Thank you. Speaker Johnson. I vote aye on all. It's been very moving to hear everyone's gratitude to Laura Popa. So uh, thank you, Laura. Okay, all items on today's general order calendar have a vote of 47 in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstentions, with the exceptions of introduction 936A, with a vote of 43 in the affirmative, four in the negative, no abstentions, and land use items 773 and 774 with their accompanying resolutions have a vote of 46 in the affirmative, one in the negative, no abstentions, and the revised land use call ups vote is now 47 in the affirmative and zero in the negative. Thank you. You're on mute, Madam Majority Leader. The items on today's general orders calendar are adopted. Introduction and reading of bills. All bills are referred to committees as indicated on today's agenda. Thank you. We will now move into the discussion of resolutions. As a reminder, please wait until the Sergeant at Arms begins the countdown clock before you begin your remarks. Mr. Parliamentarian, are there any members that have wished to sign up to speak on the resolutions that we will be voting on today specifically? Yes, Councilmember Koo. Councilmember Koo, you may begin. Time starts now. Thank you, Majority Leader. As the city with the most reported hate crimes in the nation, New Yorkers know how important it is that we report any hate crimes whenever and wherever they occur. But New York City is not Atlanta or some other state where authorities may be unfamiliar with the Asian community. That hasn't stopped attacks from happening here, then we need to make sure that reporting mechanisms are in place here and across the country. 
we need to make sure law enforcement and social services and governments know what to do when hey, we is, is ugly hair. And we need to make sure our community is comfortable coming forward. So I'm happy we are here to vote on this resolution calling on the Congress to pass and the president to sign the COVID-19 hate crimes act. This federal legislation is sponsored by the Congresswoman Grace Mann and Senator will expedite review of COVID-19 hate crimes. It will also issue guidance for reporting in multiple languages and for eliminating racist language. I would like to thank Congresswoman Grace Mann and Senator Massey Hirono for sponsoring this legislation. And I will also like to thank Speaker Johnson for bringing this to a vote so quick. And Council Member Chin for sponsoring this legislation with me. Special thanks to Chair Adams, Jason Goldman, Laura Popa, Jeff Baker, Matt Thompson, and, and the entire Public Safety Committee staff, and also my own staff. Right. Thank you. Thank you so much, Councilmember Ku, and thank you so much for your leadership on this very, very important issue. Are there any other members that wish to speak at this time? There are, Madam Majority Leader, Council Members Grudenchik and Cabrera. And again, this is just on the resolution we'll be voting on now. Council Member Grudenchik, you may begin. Thank you, Majority Hi, Leader. Uh, I, I just want to add my voice to Peter Ku, my, my dear friend and colleague. Uh, after Peter, I represent um, a district which was probably the second largest Asian American population in the city of New York. And the fear on the streets is palpable. Um, so many of us have attended uh, rallies against hate, um, including one uh, a week and a half ago that was organized by our borough president and Congresswoman Meng uh, that stepped off from Flushing Town Hall. Um, we live side by side, as I've often said, uh, we are a United Nations uh, here in New York City, and um, the disease of hate uh, can take an especially high toll here in New York City where we depend upon each other so, so much uh, to go about our daily lives. So um, we here in the New York City Council today are taking a very, very important stand uh, to let the haters know that hate will not thrive in our communities, in our city, and that we are leading the way united. Um, different people from different faiths, from different backgrounds, different ethnic groups, but all united in opposing uh, hate. So thank you, Madam Majority Leader. For allowing me to say a few words, and I thank uh, uh, Council Members Ku and Chin for leading this fight. Thank you. Thank you. And Council Member Cabrera. Time starts now. Thank you so much. I also want to join in uh, and thank Council Member Peter Ku and Margaret Chin. Uh, what a few may know is that my daughter in law, uh, she's from Thailand. And uh, I have a Tyrican uh, grandson. And I have to be honest with you, I, I, I worry every time she goes out. And uh, she's bold, she's strong, uh, but we have to do better. And uh, may we all be part of the solution. And uh, again, thank you uh, both uh, Councilman Riku and Chen for your leadership. Thank you so much, Council Member Cabrera. Are there any other members who wish to speak at this time, Mr. Parliamentarian? No, Madam Majority Leader. Thank you. We will now have a voice vote on today's resolution. If you wish to vote against or abstain from today's resolution, please notify the Legislative Documents Unit by email. I'll now read today's resolution into the record. Resolution 1619 calls upon the United States Congress to pass and the president to sign the COVID-19 Hate Crimes Act, H.R. 1843, S. 937, which would facilitate the expedited review of COVID-19 hate crimes. Will all those in favor please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say nay. 
Any abstentions? These eyes have it. We will now move into general discussion. As a reminder, please wait until the Sergeant at Arms begins the countdown clock before you begin your remarks. Mr. Parliamentarian, are there any members who wish to speak on today's general discussion timeline? Yes, Madam Majority Leader. Council members Riley, Barron, and Miller. Council member Riley, you may begin. Time starts now. Thank you, Majority Leader. And I come to my colleagues today, I'll be introducing my first uh, legislation, um, LS 1450, a local law to amend the administrative code of the city of New York in relation to limiting fees associated with vacating the premises. Affordability is the key to the recovery of New York City. For many New Yorkers, it starts with affordable housing and providing relief to New York City tenants. I'm elated to introduce LS 1450 today alongside my colleagues in government, Council Member Powers and Council Member Traeger. This bill will help provide assistance to thousands of New York City tenants who may need to change their housing status due to an unforeseen life-changing circumstance like COVID-19 or an unanticipated change in their financial situation. Furthermore, we cannot make it more difficult for tenants by adding on additional and unforeseen fees amidst these circumstances. As I embark on my fifth month as a council member, I am enthusiastic to put forth such a vital piece of legislation. I look forward to speaking, and excuse me, and I look forward to speaking with my colleagues in government to garner more support around this bill. Thank you, Majority Leader. Thank you, Council Member Riley, and congratulations on introducing introducing legislation so early in the beginning of your term. I'd now like to call on Council Member Barron. Time starts now. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Uh, I first want to offer my condolences to the family, colleagues, and friends of former Assembly Member Aurelia Green. I did serve with her in the Assembly, and she did serve as the Speaker Pro Tem, and always brought dignity and confidence to that role. And I particularly offer condolences to our council member, Vanessa Gibson, because I know that they were very close. Secondly, I want to offer congratulations to those who are leaving and to Laura Popa. It takes a lot to step out from your safety zone of 20 odd years and move into another area, but I wish you well in your future ventures. And I know that you'll be successful as you've demonstrated your professionalism here in the city council. And lastly, I want to call attention, my colleagues' attention to intro 2301, which calls on the Commissioner of Transportation to conduct a study of the safety risk posed by the coexistence of bicycle lanes and bus routes in the city. I've noticed that now with dedicated bike lanes and then cars parked not at the curb, but in what was previously a, la a lane of traffic, there might be the opportunity for a cyclist moving down a bike lane to not be aware that a bus is perhaps discharging, a school bus may be discharging a student because there are no arms on that side, no stop arm signals on that side of the bus to alert a cyclist or even someone else uh, traveling down that road, uh, down that bike lane, that there might be a safety issue. So that's what the bill calls for. I'm so pleased that it's being co-introduced by Council Member uh, Rodriguez and Council Member Alika Ampi Samuel. Thank you very much. Hope that you'll read the bill and sign on. Thank you. Council Member Barron, Council Member Miller. Time starts now. Thank you, Majority Leader. I just want to add my echoes to the departure of, of, of our, our dear colleague, Laura Popper, and thank her for her service uh, and her guidance for, for so many. Um, I was remiss uh, to talk about last month the passing of a good friend, neighbor, and, and someone who was so important to so many New Yorkers. That is uh, Mr. Bill McCreary of Fox News, uh, then just Channel 5 News, and he's the... Uh, uh, was with uh, AM New York and, and, and so many other things uh, um, in, in early media. He rose to, to uh, 
the heights of vice president of, of, of Fox and then Fox became uh, Channel 5, then it became Fox and, 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 and it got a little different. And I just want to say to this body that uh, many of the uh, members of the community and uh, have been trying for many years to uh, uh, in, introduce and in, have Bill McCreary introduced to the uh, uh, um, Media Hall of Fame and it did not happen. It just simply required that, that um, Fox News actually apply. And so I think that if we in the post post uh, posturous that we it'd be only appropriate that we do so do, throughout his career, um, not just on television and that he uh, preceded uh, the Melba Talbers and Gil Nobles and so many that were so instrumental um, that he has his due among many that he, he interviewed uh, many US presidents, uh, Rosa Parks, Dr. King, Malcolm X, Nelson Mandela, and just just a tremendous, tremendous role model, uh, tremendous person in, in the Southeast Queens community, but more important to, to the diaspora and really telling our story. And, and I hope that we can get behind uh, and, and really give him his due. And so I just wanted to, uh, we were remiss in, in not mention that we have a lot of, uh, lost a lot of good lives over the past uh, year, but just in, in recent weeks, we lost some. So I just want to remind everyone of his contributions. Thank you. Thank you so much, Council Member Miller. Are there any other members who wish to speak at this time? Yes, Madam Majority Leader. Council Member Amprey Samuel. Council Member Amprey Samuel, you may begin. Time starts now. Thank you, Majority Leader Cumbo. Today, I would like to bring your attention to intro 2300, a bill which establishes a Marshall Plan for Moms Task Force to develop and issue recommendations on how to support working mothers and caregivers, particularly in light of the issues that have become more acute during COVID-19 pandemic. We just celebrated Mother's Day at the beginning of the week. And on Friday, we recognize International Day of Families as a certified holiday by the United Nations. This year's theme is families and new technologies. It speaks directly to the relevancy of this bill, which calls for us to examine and remediate the challenges that keep women from fully participating and thriving in the workforce. Women and mothers have long been lauded as the backbone of families, yet parity and recognition in the workplace have been a per perpetual challenge. Nearly half of the American workforce is female, yet gender inequality continues to persist in many forms. Numerous pieces of legislation have been enacted through the years to tackle some of the obvious injustices, but there are other inherent and less discernible hardships for working mothers and caregivers. As, the primary, as primary caregivers, women tend to need more time away from the workplace. Absence from the workplace is often seen as a lack of commitment and negatively affect opportunities and promotions. So this bill would look directly at putting together a task force to consider cash payments, comprehensive paid family leave, greater access to relief and mental health programs and so on. And it's a task force, task force that would go along with the Marshall Plan for Moms bill that our very own majority leader, um, Lori Cumbo is introducing, well, a resolution um, related to Congresswoman Grace Ming's bill. So I just wanted to highlight that and I hope to get your support and thank you, Madam Majority Leader, for um, your partnership on this. And thank you, Corey Johnson, for your leadership. Thank you, uh, Council Member Amprey Samuel. I appreciate that support as um, I'm feeling the bill right now as my son is homesick today and I had to time his nap time exactly with today's stated meeting and he just woke up. So this is the magic of women and what we do every day. So I wanna ask, are there any other members who wish to speak, Mr. Parliamentarian? No, Madam Majority Leader. Thank you. I will now call on Speaker Corey Johnson to close today's stated meeting. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. The stated meeting of May, uh, of May 12th, 2021 is hereby adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.